Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany. I currently have a two year old. She just turned two like two weeks ago. And then I also have an eight month old. I literally haven't made a sit down video in I think over a month. <laughs> what is going on over there? So I actually had someone ask me about my breastfeeding journey with PCOS and how I'm managing it and what's going on. So I'm going to try to get this filmed with the both of them back there. To start off with how I'm managing my PCOS right now. So I am still lifting weights because I found that the best way to keep me healthy, I really don't like running. I did run for a little bit after I gave birth because I was trying to lose that extra baby weight, but it really wasn't helping at all. So I just stopped running. I don't really like running. I don't find it relaxing or anything. And diet wise, I feel like it's completely out the window. I try to eat as clean as possible, but I still have really massive sugar cravings. So I do eat a pretty decent amount of sugar as well. I'm honestly just eating everything right now. I'm eating carbs, I'm eating fruit, I'm eating meat, sugar, everything. I'm not on the keto diet anymore because while I'm breastfeeding, I literally can't be on any diet. And I'm honestly just trying to eat whatever that will sustain me while I'm breastfeeding. And I also found that while I'm breastfeeding, I am literally always starving, starving. Like I eat so much food now and I actually love being able to eat a lot because then I can try a lot more things. <laughs> but yeah, I eat a lot. So I think it's very important to stay super hydrated and to also eat if you're hungry while you're breastfeeding because you need to be able to produce milk. The supplements I'm still taking, I'm taking Avostel, my prenatal since I'm still breastfeeding, vitamin D, cranberry with vitamin C, fish oil, and collagen. I think that's it. But yeah, those were all the supplements I was taking prior to being pregnant and I'm still taking them now. Moving on to my breastfeeding journey, I found that with Lydia, it was so smooth and so easy. I literally had no issues, which was very surprising since she is my first baby, but she literally just popped out of me and immediately latched on and I had no issues moving forward. My milk also came in on day three and I was able to express colostrum when I was in the hospital. So it was very stressful stress-free situation when it came to breastfeeding her. I was also able to breastfeed her up until like 13 to 14 months. I would have gone longer if I could have, but since I got pregnant at eight months postpartum, my milk ended up drying up at around 13 to 14 months. So I had to... Oh, let's not play with those batteries. Uh-uh, that's not a toy, that's not a toy. So I ended up having to wean her off even though she already was kind of naturally weaning since my breast milk wasn't coming in as much anymore. And it was the saddest thing ever, but it was so easy to wean her because I just remembered not feeding her for a nap one day and she went right down for a nap. And then I didn't feed her that night as well. And then she just went right to sleep at night and that was the end of it. She never asked to breastfeed after that. She never like tugged on me or even attempted to after that. It was just literally, I chose a day to stop and that was it. I cried so badly because it's just so such a bittersweet thing, I guess, since you're closing one chapter and it's never gonna happen ever again. Like th that was done and it was so sad. I'm just thankful that it was a very easy process to wean her though and that wasn't stressful either. I was an oversupplier with Lydia. I actually ended up with mastitis and I thought I was going to die. It was so painful. I just remembered having a clog and I was like, oh no, this feels really bad. And then a couple hours later, it was like, boom, I had mastitis. I had a 103 fever and I seriously thought I was gonna die. I felt miserable. Like it was the worst thing in the world. And then I just remembered, like I was trying everything to get that clog out, everything and nothing would work. And finally I was able to get a hand massager and I just pressed it and like pushed it down and I saw it like pop out. And if you've ever had a clog and you needed to massage it out, you know how painful that is. And the fact that this clog was the biggest I've ever had, I was just on my knees, like on all fours trying to get gravity to help just like crying while I was trying to massage it out. It was 
one of the most painful things I have ever had to endure. I still will say to this day, even though I don't remember the pain anymore, I don't think anyone ever remembers pain after a while, but it was worse than childbirth. I can honestly say that. Now moving on to my journey with Chloe. She is currently eight months old and we are still going on strong with breastfeeding. I never truly understood the struggle of breastfeeding. I always felt for women who couldn't breastfeed and I could understand that it was really sad and that it was frustrating, but I never truly understood it because I never went through it. So you can have sympathy and empathy for people, but until you personally experience something, you won't truly ever know what it feels like. So with Chloe, the breastfeeding journey was so difficult. The moment she popped out, she did not latch. I could not hand express any colostrum. So I was already stressed out. And then my milk also didn't come in for like, I think over seven days, if not like almost two weeks. It was a very long time and I was so stressed out. And I just remembered Googling and Googling like, when does your milk come in? When does it come in? And like, I would pump and pump and pump, but I would probably get like, it was just like literally a couple drops because I was just pumping as much as I could to try to stimulate that milk and there was just literally nothing. And I just remember like the first week of her life, she was just crying all the time because I guess she was so hungry and then I would have to feed her formula. But I was so adamant on being able to breastfeed her so I was so stressed out. I actually reached out to my lactation counselor many, many times to try to get it figured out. And finally I scheduled an appointment to go in and see her. And she gave me this one tip of where you bottle feed your baby with formula first, and then you pull it out and then you quickly try to get her to latch and then see if she'll know how to suck from there. So I tried that and it didn't work. Like she just was not latching properly. I could not get her to latch. I just couldn't understand what I was doing wrong. And so I did, and so I did that and then she gave me another tip of where when you pull her off the bottle and you put her onto your breast, you drip a couple of drops into her mouth so as she's sucking, she thinks she's getting that milk from you, but it's actually the formula. So that's what I did for roughly about a week and then I think she finally slowly started learning how to latch on and then after that I was able to completely get off the formula and now we are exclusively breastfeeding and I have not used formula ever since that weekish that I used to try to teach her how to latch and to suck. I am also very fortunate to be able to say again that I am also an overproducer this time. Thank God I haven't really had any major clogs or mastitis again. I cannot deal with that. That was terrible. So I am actually able to pump seven ounces roughly for Lydia to drink every single day and then I exclusively breastfeed Chloe. She is still not a very big fan of solids so I haven't noticed any reduction in her feedings or anything like that. I wish she would eat more solids though because it's so fun cooking for her and like seeing her try new things but she's just not interested at all. I think also having PCOS makes us uh, worry about being able to breastfeed or not, but honestly, I don't think, I haven't done a lot of research on this topic, so if I am wrong, you can correct me, but I don't think having PCOS should affect your ability to breastfeed. I think some women just can breastfeed and some can't, and that's totally okay. I think sometimes breastfeeding is just you're able to do it or you're not, and there's nothing wrong with that. If you have to feed your baby formula, I think it's completely fine. Like it's great being able to breastfeed if that's something you want to do, but if you can't do it, it's okay too because your baby is so loved, the baby's healthy and everyone's happy. And I think that's honestly the most important thing and more important than being able to breastfeed or not. I'm also back on birth control now, unfortunately. I don't like being on birth control, but I'm also terrified of getting the IUD. So I'd rather take the pill, which I know has more hormones in it, than the IUD, which is more localized and has less dosage of hormones. But I have read so many horror stories of getting the IUD inserted and I am just so scared. So that's not something I'm gonna do anytime soon. So. 
when you are breastfeeding, normally you take the mini pill because it doesn't affect your it doesn't affect your milk production. I am taking Apri. I think that's the one it's called. It's progesterone based. So it's supposed to lower my breast milk production and I've been on it for about a week now and I haven't noticed anything so I can't really speak on that topic. But yeah, that's basically everything. If y'all have any more questions, I would love to answer. And I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see y'all in my next one. Bye. Can you say bye? Can you wave and say bye? Oh, good job. <laughs>